Good day everyone, welcome to the second question box video here on the Aviation Pro channel in which we will answer yet another question posted in the question box. Uh, this time a question by uh, Sven. Uh, thank you Sven for posting this question and a special wing wave to you for uh, posting this one. Um, Sven has a little, rather big question but uh, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, speak it out loud here. Can the pilots influence an aircraft's environmental sustainability? sustainability during the trip from departure to the destination is flying on the autopilot the default most efficient way of flying or operating an aircraft or can a pilot take actions to increase sustainable flying by tweaking the autopilot uh, him or herself how do local regulation procedures influence this for example like one engine taxiing at amsterdam i believe very good question uh, sven i think very uh, contemporary question um, based on the current thing uh, with the climate um, the unfortunate fact is, of course, that planes burn a lot of fuel, and that's something that, uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, does not change very quickly. Uh, I think every pilot wants to fly a plane that is totally sustainable, but at the moment that's not possible. Um, even though planes get more and more sustainable over time, of course, if you compare like the 777 versus the 787, you can already see quite a big difference in fuel usage. So. Um, the best way to answer this question is probably just by taking you through flight, uh, kind of taking you through the steps that we take or that pilots in general take to m operate the flight efficiently. Of course, safety is always the most important thing, but uh, efficiency is one other aspect that uh, pilots uh, deal with on a daily basis. So let's just start at the very beginning, you know, the flight at the dispatch phase, um, uh, when you start a flight and when you start preparing. Now. Um, it depends kind of what operation uh, you are running. If you're just a uh, you know small aviation commercial pilot, um, you know you have a lot more influence on, for example, the loading of the airplane, how much cargo you're taking with you, what the balance of the airplane is, because that also has an influence on uh, the performance. If you're flying more of the bigger operations like airlines, then dispatch is in control of that and a special load control uh, system that takes care of how the airplane is loaded. Uh, so they, they already have an influence on, for example, a more aft center of gravity will make the airplane um, yeah, fly a bit more efficiently. Um, now, also, when you're preparing the flight, you're, of course, looking at the weather, looking at the things that you will encounter en route. And, of course, there's a legal amount of fuel that you have to take with you. But on top of that, you can take extra fuel with you or not. And this extra fuel... Sometimes it's very simply necessary when you expect, for example, a lot of thunderstorms en route, you're going to need to take some extra fuel also based on your previous experiences to uh, uh, circumnavigate around those thunderstorms. But uh, many times there's no reason to take extra fuel and then of course you um, ask the other pilots what they think about it and you know, by not taking that extra fuel uh, just because it's simply not necessary, you're already saving a little bit of fuel there. Um, then you walk up to the airplane and the airplane is parked, you start it all up of course. Um, so what can you do in this phase of the flight when you're starting the, up the airplane? It begins with, for example, a delayed APU start. Uh, sometimes at airports it's also a very strict requirement. Uh, they only want you to start the APU, APU very shortly before the startup time. Um, but by, by delaying the APU start you save a little bit, bit of fuel. Also when you're pushing back. Sometimes a pushback can take quite a long time because it may contain, for example, a push-pull procedure. And even though the ground crew already clears you to start the engines, you may decide to just, you know, delay the engine start a little bit uh, just to save a little bit of fuel there. Uh, also taxiing, of course. Taxiing with one engine is possible. On some aircraft is more common than others. Um, also depends a bit on the weather. If there are ice conditions, then you would not want to do a one engine uh, uh, taxi out or taxi in. Um, but for example, for on the Embraer aircraft, I uh, experienced it quite often that you uh, only have an one engine taxi out, for example. Also, the taxiing itself, you can do that efficiently by not spooling up in the engines all the time and back, but just having kind of a constant taxi speed and uh, just running the engines efficiently. All right, so then you arrive at the runway and then you have your takeoff. Now, of course, the takeoff has to be safe and then uh, you can reduce uh, to, to climb thrust rather quickly. And of course, the goal is to clean up the aircraft as quickly as possible to get rid of any drag. And then you climb to your cruise altitude. And um, 
Uh, this is also uh, where kind of the autopilot uh, story comes in. Of course, a departure is most often hand flown for quite a bit. And uh, the question is, does the autopilot uh, more efficiently, efficiently operate the flight path? Probably yes, I think so, because and when you notice when you put the autopilot on you can also notice it in flight sim the autopilot does a very good job at following the flight path very efficiently and smoothly all right when you fly yourself there's always a little bit more inputs than you maybe want and or than the autopilot would do we can kind of compare to you know uh, sailing in with a boat uh, on water you know you have a certain waypoint ahead of you you're going to be steering quite a lot to maintain a straight line but an autopilot on a boat or on an airplane for that matter can maintain that straight line much more efficiently so autopilot usage i think definitely helps and then of course you can manipulate the autopilot by uh, you know asking for direct from atc uh, sometimes uh, this is also of course during the cruise phase uh, asking for a direct really helps to shorten the routes um, step climbs are things that you can do of course during cruise as well step climbs are uh, at some point just uh, yeah, necessary to climb to a high altitude where it's more efficient but it also kind of depends on the wind so if the winds at a certain altitude are for example very favorable um, then you might climb to that but if the uh, winds at your current altitude are more favorable than a higher altitude the airplane may want you to climb but the dispatch you know the flight plan says that uh, it's not um, uh, advised to climb yet because they know that the wind uh, at that altitude are not as favorable so it's really a play between uh, what's in the fly plan what is the current wind information of course you can request wind data in real life as well um, to have accurate wind data for each and every waypoint and then you can base your decision on that you can also have contact with dispatch which can send you more accurate information about the current winds of course when a fly plan is created it's based on winds that are where you know uh, forecast at that time but um, of course as the flight pro progresses maybe like one third into your flight you might get an update from dispatch you know, saying hey actually the winds have changed a bit actually it may be advisable to do a step climb right now right so these are the little ways that you can influence the, f the flight path and efficiency of the airplane okay um, and with that of course you're trying to fly at economical speeds um, sometimes HC might give you a fixed speed but you can also always request also to fly at your own economical speed based on what the airplane calculates. Now, another way of uh, playing around with fuel efficiency during the flight is of course by adjusting the cost index and the cost index is kind of a ratio between the fuel cost and the time related costs and when you're flying an economic speed schedule uh, like we're flying right now here in the 737 you can adjust the cost index in order to determine um, yeah, what is more important to, uh, to you uh, the time related cost or the fuel cost so basically the lower the cost index uh, the less fuel you will burn and the higher cost index the more fuel you will burn in favor of arriving a little bit earlier at your destination and of course this really depends on the operational process and uh, you know, when you're uh, running a bit behind schedule you might increase the cost index to burn a little bit more fuel but then that way you can uh, make sure that the flight arrives on time so that connecting passengers of course make uh, their uh, connection so uh, you can change of course the cost index during the flight you might during the pre-flight of course get a cost index you can also do that in your flights and flights uh, you will uh, in a sim brief input a cost index and uh, yeah, you can already adjust it there by having a lower cost index your flight will operate more efficiently uh, but also during cruise you can of course change that so for example here i have here the legs page uh, or the performance page here open on one uh, uh, cdu and here the progress page so you can kind of see uh, what it does so um, Right now we would arrive at our destination Dubai, just, just a quick and dirty setup, uh, Dubai at 15.52 Zulu with a fuel of 2.8, but we're flying with a cost index of 200, but let's say, you know, we departed earlier, maybe the winds were a bit more favorable, uh, maybe we can uh, see what uh, lower cost index does for our flight, so let's say lower to 100, and you can already see that it's a uh, uh, saves a lot of fuel uh, by lowering the cost index and uh, we arrive uh, well four minutes later but if that's okay you know we can do that and then uh, we execute such uh, change and then uh, the uh, aircraft will adjust its speed schedule now you can also of course uh, uh, 
uh, confer with uh, dispatch in order to maybe calculate a more optimum profile because adjusting the cost index might also change a bit uh, when you know it's more efficient to do certain step climbs so the position of the step climbs might alter with a cost index that is different uh, now the other way around is of course also the same i mean if you are running behind schedule and you want to increase the cost index you know uh, uh, at some point it's not favorable to increase it much further so for example uh, yeah we arrive now with at 1556 zulu with 3.7 and let's say we increase to 150 well, we uh, win three minutes here, but as you can see, we it yeah it takes quite a lot of fuel. You know, there comes a point where uh, increasing the cost index doesn't uh, you know really increase the efficiency anymore, and then you know it might be favorable to just leave it at a low value. And of course, the longer your flight, the more uh, impact this has, uh, and of course, the closer you get to your destination, the less impact changing the cost index will have. So it's something that you have to do early on in the flight. But as you can see, you can play a lot around with these values. And then check your progress page, see what a different cost index value does to your flight. And then also, uh, yeah, in real life, you can also, also contact dispatch to see uh, yeah, uh, how it, your flight plan can be adjusted, how the step climbs can be adjusted with this new cost index in order to uh, yeah, operate, operate your flight as efficiently as possible. So those are kind of the things that you can do during cruise. Uh, descent, now of course also big topic, descent you can uh, you know, do as efficiently as possible uh, by uh, calculating flight path accurately and also updating the flight path in the, in the FMS uh, to make sure it's kind of corresponds to what you can expect at that airfield. Um, and uh, simply by yeah, um, trying to fly a most idle descent as possible. That's the, that's the goal. It's not always possible to complete that you know, fully from top of descent all the way to uh, landing um, due to HC restrictions or uh, just simple HC instructions kind of give you something different than you expect. And then you might find yourself sometimes flying at a altitude of like 6,000 feet or whatever. Um, you know, with some engine trust on it. So it's it's really a play between the air traffic controller as well and uh, your own flight path. But, you know, based on your uh, uh, knowledge and experience of an airfield, you can kind of, you know, devise a flight path yourself, also mentally, uh, to perform in the most optimum descent as possible. Also, what happens uh, during the descent, if, you, if your flight has been flown on a high cost index, but you know that you arrive on time, uh, lowering the cost index might actually improve uh, also the uh, sustainability of the flight. So these are some tweaks that you can do. And um, then you land, of course. Landing, uh, another way to save fuel is to reduce the flaps. Uh, you know, you might normally land with flaps 30, but you could also land with flaps 25 or whatever, depending on your airplane. And of course, upon landing itself, the use of reverse thrusters. Reverse thrusters are not really used that often to their full extent. Actually, usually it's just idle reverse, so uh, letting the auto brake system do its work and then uh, using idle reverse uh, also really helps to save a lot of fuel, okay? Uh, and then after landing, well, again, the same thing as with uh, taxiing in, uh, after the engines have cooled down properly, you can switch uh, off an engine. You, you need to run the APU for that. Uh, but then at least you have an engine shutdown um, um, and kind of depends on the airport uh, whether it's allowed or not some airports you know or certain parts of airports it's not allowed for example an airport where there's a taxiway that kind of has a ramp or something where you would need a lot of trust they don't want you to taxi in with a single engine there so um, you would have to read upon that but uh, yeah, uh, an airport at Amsterdam, you can easily do that and uh, just set down an engine and then uh, taxi in with a single engine. So um, those are the kind of the ways that you can save fuel. And then when you part, you can kind of look on your flight plan, you know, how much fuel did you, did you burn and uh, how much fuel did you actually save. And it's quite fun to actually do that. So um, you can also try this in your flight sim flights, of course. Uh, uh, just kind of challenge yourself by saving fuel every little flight that you do. Um, by looking at the flight plan, what did the flight plan say and how much did we actually burn? And then uh, based on that, you can kind of uh, give yourself a little challenge to uh, burn less fuel with every flight. So again, it are the little steps that we can do and the autopilot really helps with this as well. And um, 
every little bit helps here. Uh, that's that's kind of the thing that is uh, uh, surrounds uh, efficiency of flight. Every little bit helps, and uh, sometimes you have to remind yourself to really actively be busy with that. It's very easy to just to just follow the flight plan and follow the standard procedures. Um, but sometimes you kind of have to actively think, okay, uh, how can we save fuel today, you know? So, um, yeah, there are a lot of options there uh, for pilots. So I hope this kind of answers your question. It's got a bit of an insight into things that you can do um, also in your flights and flights. And, um, yeah, I would say just uh, have fun with it and uh, try it out yourself. And uh, then I'm sure you will, uh, over time, see... Uh, how these little things can have a big effect because if every airplane every flight saves a bit of fuel then overall it of course saves a lot of fuel so that's it for now um, if you want to have a question answered for the aviation pro question box make sure you check out the description there's a link to a google sheets uh, form uh, google form where you can um, post your question and maybe your question will be picked for one of the following videos so um, I will say goodbye for now for, from this nice sunny destination, tropical background right here, Curaçao, and I will see you next time. Cheers.